All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. I've been going over the online PDF textbook, App Inventor 2, Create Your Own Android Apps by Wolber, Abelson, Spurtis, and Looney. We're about halfway through chapter 10, where the, we're doing the make quiz, take quiz, and now we're working on the make quiz. So it's time for us to come in here and create this new procedure that will be called Display QAs. So I'm going to take what I've got so far and collapse it. And we're going to set up a new procedure, which again is going to be called display. Oh, that was right. QAs for question and answers. All right, we want to set our question answers label to the empty string. the text. Next we want to set our answer index to 1. Set global answer index, which I don't think we have, so let's create a new variable. Let's come in here, and that will be answer index. And we'll initially, at least, we'll initialize that to zero. All right, and then we want to come in again, set the global answer index to one. Then we want to put a for each block in here, and you'll notice that everything else is within the for each block. For each question in list, wondering if there's more than one for each block and I maybe goofed it up so let's check I think we want this for each block here so I'm going to grab the one that we had and I'm going to drop it in the garbage and again for each question in list we want to do a get global question list And under the do, we want to set global answer. Now why my screen seems to be really narrow or uh, not very high right now, and I can't make it bigger. I'm not sure why. So I want to set the global answer list to get global answer list plus one. Put a one there. <coughs> Right. Got all the 
is now we need a set question answers label dot text This isn't going to work very well because this, this is going to cover that, but that's still okay. We're going to put a join block in here. And in that join block, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five different things. So as of right now, and I thought it would be so sorry. So we've got two. We've now got three. Four. Let's fill these up. We want question answers label dot text. And we want to follow that with a backslash n. Which will be our new line character. And next, get question. We've got an answer index. We've got a question in list. We've got, but we don't. I don't see an answer in here. set that to the empty string when we first create it. All right. So we want a get question and then a get answer. So we've got an answer, but I didn't make a question. Okay. Let's create another variable. All question. All right, we'll again set that equal to the empty string. So this right here, this one, will be a get question right there, followed by a colon and then get answer. everything. So as the author says, the display QA's procedure encapsulates. Now we talked about that in an earlier chapter and remember what encapsulation means. Hides from view. When you are working on an application, all right, and a good way to look at this is when you're working on an application like this. This, your blocks area, is what's known as your implementation. This, the designer area, is what's known as your interface. The end user cares about the interface, does not care about the implementation. All right, unless, of course, I guess it wouldn't work. So, by displaying a procedure, you won't have to copy the blocks needed to display the list more than once in the app. You just call display QEs, QAs rather, as necessary. The for each only allows you to iterate through a single list. In this case, there are two lists. The for each is used to iterate through the question list, but you need to select an answer as well. As you proceed to accomplish this, we'll use an index variable 
which we used in chapter 8. We're going to use a variable called answer index, and as it says, it'll be used to track the position of the answer list as we go and make our way through. Answer index will be set to 1 before the for each begins. Within the for each, it'll be used to select the current answer from the answer list, and then it'll be in incremented. On each iteration of the for each, the current question and answer are concatenated to the end of the question answers label.txt property with a colon in between them. It says you now have a procedure for displaying the question answer pairs, but it won't help unless it unless you call it as needed. Modify the submit button to call the QAs. All right. So the block should appear like this. So it should be before we set the question and answers to the empty string. So let's go back to our submit button. Now we can probably take this and collapse it. That'll make give us a lot more room. All right, so now for our submit button. All right, so when it's clicked, we want to come in here and call that display QAs. So we added that into our submit button. Test your app by entering a couple of question answer pairs. As you add them, do they appear on separate lines in the question answers label? We'll try that, and then we will stop this part of the presentation. So. Let's go in here and let's enter another question. Who was the Super Bowl LIMVP? And the answer was Tom Brady. We'll submit. Doesn't like something that we did. The operation cannot accept the arguments. All right. So we'll come back and we'll take a look at this when we come back.